Look, when I make all these videos about great moves and act like I know less than the people actually on the show, it's important to understand I'm not saying I'm the most humble person to never actually play Survivor, but I am. I am the most humble. And admitting that is gonna backfire on me, isn't it? Was that a great idea for a video intro? Internet, there is a recurring trend in analysis of these game shows like Survivor, where if a player makes a move and it doesn't work out, it was almost certainly a bad move. And if it does work out, it was most definitely a good one. Because everything a winner did worked and everything a loser did, didn't. Therefore, we all need to be more like Gabler and less like Jesse or Cody. You can always spin a move that didn't work as bad by focusing on the parts that caused it to fail, and vice versa. All while ignoring the logic of the move, how it came together, what it would have meant had it succeeded. And don't ever account for luck. Don't get me wrong, there are valid reasons why all of the moves in this video didn't work that could be traced back to the move maker's errors. But ultimately, I don't think it's fair to say that every move that backfired is bad or that every move that didn't backfire is good, as I said in a previous video. But enough of the preamble, here are five moves I think were great and in another season could have worked, maybe some of them even did, but for whatever reason in these cases they didn't and instead backfired. And no, I am not bringing up JT giving his idol to Russell. Let's start the video with a move most recent in everyone's minds. I referenced them at the top of the vid, and yeah, it is Jesse sniping Cody at the final six of Survivor 43. Jesse nabbed Cody's idol and also blindsided him, and a lot of fans would say this move was amazing at the time, but then Jesse didn't win the season and retroactively began to wonder if taking out Cody here was the right way to go. Had Cody survived the final six, Jesse would need to take him out at either five or four, which would have proved difficult given Cody was the most likely player to win the challenges. He was easily the front runner to win the season based on what the jury was saying, so it was imperative Cody go before the final three. You could take a chance and cut Cody now at six, and given Jesse had a second idol, he was already safe at the final five. So it really just came down to winning that final challenge or making a fire, which isn't the worst odds. Jesse did come in second in that final four challenge after all, and he did have a fire go going, he just happened to be against the fastest fire maker we'd ever seen at the time in Survivor history with Gabler. I think on most other seasons, Jesse stands an even better chance. The biggest problem with Jesse's move against Cody wasn't so much about removing Cody from the board, it was about not working with Carla to keep her around until the final four. And Carla was on board to work with Jesse until he chose to try to flush her idol. She did vote for Owen at the final six, as was their original plan. Carla was another jury threat after Cody. It was likely either her or Jesse that were gonna win, but Carla was not the challenge beast Cody was. She hurt her hand a few days prior that was still not in the best shape. Because Jesse held an idol of his own, he was in the final four no matter if Cody was still in the game or not. So really, what I think he should have done was either keep both idols in his possession, both his and Cody's, or at least not spook Carla into playing hers at the final six so she could save herself at the final five, meaning both her and Jesse are in the final four. Because Jesse played Cody's idol for Owen at the final six, but he didn't need to. And had he held it, he would almost single-handedly, no pun intended, get to decide who goes at the final five. Had he worked with Carla a little more, he would increase his chance of surviving the final four by either knocking out Cassidy or Gabler at five, increasing his odds to win the challenge, or make a fire. Taking out Cody was a great move, executed at the right time. It gave Jesse the boost he needed to win the game, and Cody wasn't bitter at all. But it backfired because of all these smaller details he didn't choose to make happen to set himself up going forward. 13th person voted out of Survivor 43, Cody. Cody, tribe spoken. 
How about the first ever Ice Queen in Survivor? Can we talk about Amy from season nine Vanuatu and 16 Micronesia? She's most known for her first appearance as she didn't make it to the merge in fans versus favorites. But in this case, I wanna dive a little deeper into what she was trying to accomplish on season 16 that ultimately cost her the game. Amy was largely at the mercy of the other favorites once she was swapped onto a new tribe a few episodes into the season. She was working with Ozzy, Amanda, and Sari in a foursome against four fans who were divided. At first they took out Joel, a fan, which secured the favorites majority four in a tribe of seven. However, it was at the next vote where Amy had a great move in mind to blindside Ozzy and seize control of the tribe and potentially the game. Simply put, the fans that were left, Eric, Tracy, and Chet were on the bottom. And if Amy flipped, that would give them four votes to Ozzy, Amanda, and Ceres three. And if Ozzy wasn't expecting it, which he kinda wasn't, then they'd flush the idol too. A massive win for all of them. Unfortunately, this plan had to be paused because Chet had a piece of coral lodged in his foot and he was in a lot of pain and was expecting to get medevaced, so Instead, he asked the tribe to vote him out. Amy was kind of hoping he would just, you know, hold on for one vote to take out Ozzy, but Chet wasn't willing to play ball and instead took his ball and sent himself home. The plan was smashed. It was called off for now. Until the next vote, anyway. Which numerically seems odd, given there's now six people in the tribe, and Amy can't flip to Eric and Tracy's side to give them numbers since that would make the vote three to three. But Amy wasn't finished playing just yet. Amy had another ace up her sleeve to try and get Ozzy ousted yet again. The plan was for everyone to vote out Tracy, either four to two or five to one if Eric decided to join in. Amy approached Sari and Amanda about the idea to work with Tracy for a vote and vote out Eric instead, because Eric was closer to Ozzy than Tracy was, and Tracy could possibly work for them in the future. Sari and Amanda were considering the idea, but what they didn't realize is that Amy was now talking with Eric and Tracy about actually voting out Ozzy. And if Ozzy, Sari, and Amanda split their votes two and one, this meant Amy, Tracy, and Eric could seize the day and pull off a three, two, one vote against the queen, Sari, who actually pulled this off four seasons prior. It almost went through until Sari and Amanda decided it wasn't worth blindsiding Ozzy to send Eric packing. They didn't want to tip their hand too soon that they were against him, and it's a good thing they didn't because then we'd never get the Ozzy blindside a few episodes later. But it needs to be said that Amy was playing her butt off here, and for two votes, she was making great moves to better position herself. She was threading a needle from a disadvantage and making it work. But for one reason or another, it didn't end up happening, and then it all backfired on her when Tracy was voted out, and Eric became the next target, and he ratted out Amy's plans to the other favorites to prove she wasn't as trustworthy. Amy tried to play it down, but it wasn't enough, and her bright ideas came back to bite her. I was never a part of the original alliance between James, Parvati, Sari, Amanda, and Ozzy. So I'm also in a very vulnerable situation. Maybe I need to play the game a little differently. I'm giving all my trust to you. Okay. Take I care agree. of me. Take care of me, okay, you guys, please? Because I'm really sticking my neck out there, you guys. I'm like dying from this. You could help take Ozzy down because he's not expecting it. This would be the craziest play ever in the history of this game. If Tracy and Eric convince Chet to stay in the game and make a vote, I would vote with them. Chet, the tribe has spoken. The plan that Tracy and I talked about is Talk Amanda and Sari into voting for Eric, which they want to do anyways. Tell them that I'll vote with them. Go for that. We all three say we're voting for Eric. Ozzy doesn't know and doesn't want to vote for Eric, so he'll vote for Tracy, thinking we're all going to vote for Tracy. Well, underneath all of that, Tracy, Eric, and I are going to vote for Ozzy and just take Ozzy out at the knees. Seventh person voted out of Survivor fans versus favorites. Tracy. And since we're already talking about Sari, how about her infamous move to use Sarah's vote steal advantage against her to attempt to save Sarah by voting out Ty at the final seven of season 34 Game Changers. Every time I try to explain this move in a single sentence, it always sounds so confusing. Sari is one of the only people on the cast to actually deserve that title, Game Changer. Sari was changing the game in real time when this great move came back to haunt her after the small print at the bottom of the advantage 
revealed she wasn't able to do what she wanted to do after all. And can you blame her? Like, does anybody actually read the fine print? Basically, Sarah had this vote steal advantage and gave it to Sri to hold on to. Sri believed that Sarah was in trouble and she wanted to vote out Ty. And so Sri's plan was to use the vote steal to steal Sarah's vote and cast two votes against Ty, all the while convincing Ty that Suri wasn't using it against him because she's not stealing Ty's vote. She's stealing Sarah's vote. And Ty had an idol, and she didn't want him to play that idol because she wanted to vote him out, so she couldn't let him get suspicious. Suri was trying to keep so many plates spinning at once, and for what it's worth, it could have worked if it weren't for the fact that the advantage said it wasn't transferable. Meaning Suri wasn't allowed to use it, only Sarah could ever use it because it was her because she found it first. Which is kind of dumb and just limits the gameplay, and it's a stipulation that would later be removed in future seasons, but this was a first. A game changer, if you will. In the confusion of what Sari was trying to do, Sarah took the advantage back and used it immediately to vote out Sari's closest ally, Michaela. Because Ty was actually against Sarah, but... Oh well, it, it didn't matter. Sri's brilliant move was stopped dead in its tracks and never got to take off as it backfired pretty hard right after. I'm from the old school. If you got it, play it. So I'm going to use it, believe that. She going to give me the advantage because that's how much she believes in Ty. So I would like to use this advantage. So I am going to steal Sarah's vote. Well, actually, um, that's my advantage. This is non-transferable and cannot be stolen from you. Yeah, Suri, the key word in there is non-transferable. None of that. All right, so whose vote are you going to steal? I'm going to take ties. 14th person voted out, the seventh member of our jury. Michaela, need to bring me a torch? I don't see how that makes sense, Sarah, but... Do you boo? Now, if only Sari had stuck to the plan, maybe all of that could have been avoided. Unlike Keith, who did stick to the plan and then proceeded to blow up his alliance's plan. Damn it, Keith. You had one job. The next great move that tragically backfired is from season 29, San Juan del Sur. It's at the final nine after both Josh and Jeremy were taken out. Keith, Wes, and Alec were on the bottom against a loose majority alliance of six. And the majority's plan was to split the vote, three on Keith, three on Wes, and if Keith played his idol, then Wes goes home. Otherwise, Keith gets voted out in the revote. Makes perfect sense, and there was nothing Keith or Wes or Alec could do about it. And then Reed showed up. Reed won immunity and felt emboldened to make a move directly at the heart of the Alliance, directly at John, another guy who held an idol too. John was kind of the figurehead of this group and Reed wanted to seize control and gain a foothold for the second half of the merge with the players on the bottom. None of these players were all that strategic and Reed stood to be the front runner if he could succeed, especially if Keith didn't play his idol either. And that is where the plan came into effect. With the majority six splitting their votes, Reed would then flip his vote to John, meaning the vote outcome would be four votes John, three votes Keith, and two votes Wes, sending John home in a wild blindside. Of course, it kind of goes without saying, but Reed was going to play double agent, pretending to be with the majority. And so, at Tribal Council, he said all the usual stuff to Jeff and the other players about where his loyalty lied. And this caused Keith, a guy who wasn't the best at Survivor to try and reassure Reed that Reed should just stick to the plan. The plan they set in motion to blindside John. The plan that nobody was supposed to know about. Keith's comment to Reed to stick to the plan put doubt into the other players' heads, and before the votes were read, Natalie urged John to play his idol, which he did, invalidating all of the votes against him, and then in a panic, Keith played his idol too, which meant Wes, Keith's son, was now voted out with two votes out of nine. And he was idled out by his own dad. A perfect plan, not too dissimilar to what Tony pulled off in Winners at War 11 seasons later with the Sophie vote, completely blown to smithereens. Despite being the puppet master of this great move, it backfired hard against Reed, and he was voted out in the next episode. Basically, myself, Wes, Alec, and Keith vote for Strong, and we would be sending John home tonight. Are you down? I'm down. We can make this happen. We can turn this game. I'm down. It's an amazing plan, 
but it has to be stuck to. Do Wes and Keith have an idol? Are they sharing it? Or what really is happening here? I say stick to the plan. Wow, John, stick to the plan. <laughs> This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for John will not count. Ninth person voted out and the third member of our jury. Wes, you need to bring me your torch. <laughs> Sly dog, you. <laughs> Last but not least, internet, let's set off the fireworks for the grand finale. One of my favorite tribal councils, especially watching it live at the time, if only because of how unprecedented it was. Season 26. Kara Moen, the three amigos final 10 blindside against the entire cast after Reynolds wins immunity and Malcolm plays two idols, one for himself and one for Eddie, ensuring they all had safety from the votes and the majority seven alliance had nowhere to hide. The three amigos were at the bottom at the final 10 and they needed to make a bold statement to disrupt the status quo. And yeah, as I said, Reynolds won the challenge so he was safe, Malcolm meanwhile held Two idols, meaning he could play one for himself and one for the third amigo, Eddie. All three of them were now going to be immune. The other seven players were working together and were in a mad scramble to figure out on the fly at tribal council what to do. The move itself is inherently great because of the protection it provided for each amigo, but also because it had a massive impact the moment that Malcolm pulled out both idols. None of these players expected this to happen. They did not see this coming. Malcolm could have kept his mouth shut. He could have waited for the votes and then just played the idols and sent one player packing, which is technically what happened, but he wanted to leave a mark on the other alliance and try to break them up. It's one thing to get your target out, but it's another to do that and completely shatter the opposition. Ensuring safety for your alliance is great and Malcolm worked his butt off to find that second idol, but the problem that caused this move to backfire right after is that Malcolm declared who the three amigos were putting their three votes on. They were voting for Philip. So the other six players realized a few things in that moment, knowing where the amigos were voting. They could either vote for Philip in a dog pile to hide their pecking order, or they could continue to vote for Malcolm and Eddie just to ensure both idols get used. Because Malcolm was saying he was gonna use them, but he technically hadn't yet. If they don't vote for the amigos, or they decide to vote for each other, or just vote for Philip, then perhaps Malcolm won't need to play the idols after all. And that scare tactic is a great maneuver. And the idea of causing the opposing alliance to scramble and pick a random target at the last second can be effective in exposing their cracks and divisions, which there were, there always are. It's a great move that was replicated to a smaller degree by Mike Holloway four seasons later in Worlds Apart, and the key difference is that Mike didn't reveal his vote with the move. Because Malcolm revealed that the Amigos were gonna all vote for Philip, the majority alliance of seven still split their vote. Just to call Malcolm's bluff, and although the vote count got messed up as Eric did flip his vote to Philip, meaning Malcolm only needed to play one idol for Eddie, it all backfired when Malcolm realized he went from holding all the power to giving it up with the Amigos vote reveal. The majority continued to hide, to not flip, and he had no choice but to burn both idols, which he did, and he was defenseless in the next episode and subsequently voted out. Great move, but the execution needed some tweaking. So this is the other immunity idol I've been hanging on to. I'm giving it to Eddie. Yeah, I had that one for a while. I just found the other one today. The looks on faces. Andrew can't even look up. What a shift. That was the idea. That was <laughs> People are still whispering. I know for one vote, we've got control. Oh my God. One of the seven of this very tight group are going home. But we'll just throw it out there. The three of us are voting for Philip. Yes, all three of them are like, we're the three amigos. These are our idols. We're going to play them. But there is some bonus in keeping one idol. What if one person decides not to play it? And those are five times Survivor players made great moves. That backfired. Shame, that. Let me know what you think about these moves and uh, what you might have done differently and any others you remember. A big thanks to my patrons for all your support. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to stick to the plan by not revealing there is a plan on your way out. And I will see you in the next one. Once I awkwardly stand here and wait for Andrea to piss off. What is she, my babysitter? Morning. 
Mm, I love the smell of fresh dirt. And uh, it got busted by Andrea. It's a weird situation. Are you just gonna sit here? I'm just gonna come back later. She's gonna follow me around all day. I mean, you can do what you need to do. Like, I'm not gonna disturb anything. Like a little sister I can't get rid of. Okay, let's go. Spend time tomorrow morning? Yeah, I'll see you here.